So because of that efficiency that we're not saving every file every time we do backup, but we're only sa saving block level changes, it gives us much greater capacity to save many more copies of backup. So let's uh, start the recovery wizard and you can see we have the choice of this server going back to the dedicated drive that we've dedicated for our backups. We could, if we had done a manual backup, we could say we, we want to go back to that network share and recover from that. We could do that. But let's stay with the server, this particular server, and go next and see what our options are. So here you can see it is August. Uh, the last backup that we have done on this server is August the 10th. Notice that I have highlighted dates all the way back to August the 1st. I can go back into July and you can see that with my storage, my present storage capacity and the amount of files that I'm backing up, I can go back to July the 12th. It's the last highlighted day in the calendar here and I can recover any file on this server. This is what I could not do with server 2003. I was very fortunate to be able to capture maybe three weeks and it wasn't necessarily a everyday backup. Here I have everyday backed up all the way till July 12th. If I increase my storage capacity for my backups this will grow larger. But at the present time the, the storage uh, capacity that I am using on this server and I'm doing backups every day I'm able to go back to July 12th. So let's choose the last possible backup that I can recover from. And I'm going to go next. Notice we have the choice of folders and files. I can just go get a file and restore it. I can go back and get a folder and restore it. I can choose an entire C drive or D drive and restore it. That's pretty radical but you can do it. And last of all system state. This one is very important and I'll go into that in just a minute. But let's go ahead and do a file, file and folder recovery because that's typically a teacher deletes a spreadsheet or an administrator deletes a document they've been working on for two days and and so you're going into backups to see if you can recover that. So let's go next and now it's going to open up the VSS snapshot that that represents that backup on that particular day and it gives us a minute here and we're going to go ahead and click on the X and open up the volumes that it has and it's opening those up. We're going to go to the C drive and I'm going to use program files and I'm going to go ahead and restore TerraCopy. It's an application, it's not critical and I don't, I don't mind using this as an example. So uh, let's say this was a, the teacher's home directory or a particular file in the teacher's home directory. But you can be very specific. You do not have to restore the entire volume. You can select a file if you want. In this case I'm selecting an entire folder going next. Here we have the option of going to the original location which generally is the most common. I could take all those files and put them in another location anywhere I want. I could create copies so that you have both versions. I could overwrite the existing versions with the recovered versions and so you can see the version the options of recovery you want to pay close attention so that you don't delete good data. This is very important when you're recovering a folder and you're going to recover all the files. Think about what you're doing before you hit next. So I encourage you be very careful at this point in the wizard. Make sure you understand what you're doing before you go on and restore those files, especially when you're restoring a folder and all the included files. Here it says restore access control list. In other words, this is going to restore the NTFS permissions and that's fine. We're going to go, I'm going to say overwrite the existing version. I don't want two copies of the program and go next. It's showing me all the files that are going to be restored and then it's going to go to the original location, it's going to overwrite and we're going, we're in the recovery mode. 
So I'm going to hit yes. It initializes the wizard. It should go to the backup volume. Go find these files and begin the transfer and overwrite as we speak. And we are complete. So now we were, we were able to go to a folder on our backups on a specific date, recover all of those fo that folder and files, and restore them to their original location with all their NTFS permissions. We can see in the dashboard that we do have a file recovery in our status, and it was successful. Let's talk about one more function of recovery. Let's launch the wizard. We'll go to this server, go next. We can choose, let's say for example, that this is Wednesday and Tuesday we just had a Microsoft update on your server. Wednesday morning you came in, you've got help desk calls that the server seems to be very sluggish, very slow. You're calling around to some of the other uh, TSRs and they're finding that server 2008 seems to have an issue with this particular update. What can you do? Well, there's a couple things you can do. You can try a service, a, an update re, uh, rollback. There's other things that you can do and you may want to get your senior TSR involved. But if it should come down that you need to restore the registry, then you can choose the, say the day before the 9th, Let's say the, the problem uh, showed up on the 10th, and we know that we had a stable server on the 9th. So we can go next, and here's where we would choose system state. And system state is primarily, there are additional files, but primarily it's your registry. And it allows you to roll back the registry of the server back to a predetermined date, say the day before when it was stable. And then you can go next, and force this registry back. You would always leave it in the original location and you would give your confirmation and it's going to reboot the server to complete the recovery process. So this is one way that you can restore the registry if, that, if it came to that point. Generally in most cases I am showing you this from informational standpoint. You would probably bring your senior TSR and let him confirm your suspicions and look at the server to verify that yes we probably need to do a system state rollback so I wouldn't necessarily recommend you doing this on your own unless you're very confident very comfortable you've talked with your senior TSR he agrees with you or she agrees with you that this is indeed the issue and then I would move forward with this particular step. It's very handy. It's a great way to restore the registry on the server.